Hi, in this video I'll be doing a review of the Unix Dora 10. Let's begin. The Duora 10 is part of Yonex's newest Duora range, which was introduced in 2015 with none other than Malaysian ace Lee Chong Wei as a poster boy. The Duora range is meant to replace the Arcsaber range in offering even balanced racket. The Duora 10 is the first top of the line racket in this range released. The main selling point of this Duora 10, as well as all rackets in the Duora line, is its hybrid frame design. According to Yonex, the game of badminton has evolved to a point where it is no longer enough to be really really good in certain aspects of the game and the modern badminton player needs to be dominant on both his forehand and his backhand. So what Yonex did was develop a racket that would allow the modern badminton player to be on the offense with all of his shots. What it is, is essentially they've taken two different frame shapes and combined them into one single racket design, providing perfect blend of both speed and power. I'll be putting the racket to the test and find out whether this is just an expensive gimmick or a real addition to your game. But first, let's talk about the design and specifications. The Dura 10 features a black base with bright orange and green details and a glossy finish. The bright orange and green decals are all of the racket, but are laid out in such a way that depending on which side you hold the racket, you either see nothing but orange or nothing but green. This is meant to help you see at a glimpse whether or not you're holding the racket correctly. I personally am not really a huge fan of the color choice, although I like the black base, the bright orange and green are a little bit too much for me. I do find the arrangement to be nice and creative, but I would have preferred a color combination that is less in your face. Having said that, Yonex probably chose these colors to make the racket stand out, and it sure does. You can tell someone is holding the Dura 10 from far away because of how much the orange and the green stand out. As mentioned, the most prominent feature is the Duo Optimal system. The idea behind this is to give a racket that would enhance all aspects of your game. On one side, you have what is called the box frame, commonly found on heavy hitting rackets of the Voltric line. It is designed to give a solid feel for powerful smashes and clears on your forehand. On the other side is the arrow frame, which has a thinner profile compared to the box frame and is designed to easily cut through the air, provide propulsion on your backhand for faster drives and defensive shots. Yonex has been very aggressive in promoting their new Duora line, with Malaysian ace Lee Chong Wei as a poster boy, as well as a number of big name players including Matthias Bo and Carsten Morgensen from Denmark, Japan's Hiroki Endo and Chinese Taipei's Chou Tianchen all initially switching to the Duora 10. The shaft is made of high modulus graphite and nanometrics, which is a carbon fiber woven tightly together to increase strength while still being light. The box frame is made from a newly introduced material by Yonex called Nanometric DR, which is, and I'm quoting here, a cutting edge carbon designed to increase shutter hold for a more powerful shot. The arrow frame is infused with supposedly an improvement to the nanometric design to provide power and repulsion. The Yonex website states that the Dura 10 is an even balanced racket with a stiff shaft. Honing it in my hands, I would say that it's mostly accurate, though I would argue that the balance is slightly on the head heavy side. The initial feel is that the Dura 10 sits in between the Voltric and Arcsiba line in terms of balance. The first couple of swings felt really nice. The shaft is somewhat stiff, slightly stiffer than the Arcsiba line, but not as stiff as the Z series rackets of Yonex or some of the high end rackets by Victor. So, if you found the Voltric Z Force 2 or the Victor Jet Speed 10 to be too stiff, this might be an interesting option for you. So, that's it for the specs and design. The first impressions are quite positive. Let's see how the racket performs. Just a few heads up before we head into the performance test of this racket, I am, as you will see in the video, a recreational badminton player. The impression on the racket is based on my personal experiences and those of my teammates playing with it. I try my best to describe the performance of the racket as precise as possible, but it does not necessarily mean that you have to share the same opinion. And that's perfectly okay. If you feel differently when testing the racket, feel free to share your experience in the comment section below. I think it will help other badminton players make a decision when considering this racket. With that being said, let's get into playtesting. 
Right off the bat, yes, both sides feel different. Lots of people, including me, were skeptical about it and are happy to confirm that the dual optimal system is definitely not just a gimmick. There is definitely a difference in terms of swing speed when you use the queen side, it feels just a little bit faster. I can't really comment on the difference in terms of feel, both sides felt identical to me. I started out with overhead clears, holding the racket the way it's meant to be held, which is orange for the forehand and green for the backhand. One thing that was instantly obvious was my difficulty to generate pace on the forehand side. While I'm able to clear the shadow from the backcourt to backcourt with ease most of the time, there were instances where my clear fell well short of the backcourt. I feel like I have to really focus on hip rotation to really send the shadow where I want it to. In pressured clears, where I don't have time to properly set up, my clears were just very loose and have no pace behind them. While that is partly due to my weak wrist rather than the racket itself, I don't really like having to work hard for my clears, so that was a little bit of a bummer. Backhanded clears were great with this racket. I always thought that even balanced rackets are the best rackets to hit backhanded clears because they have enough weight to help provide power, but are light enough that you can really get that sudden wrist snap when you subinate. Drop shots were really nice and accurate. The Dura 10's weight balance allows you to feel the head really nicely and just guide the shadow with the smoothest of pushes over the net. Slice drops were a little bit of a mixed bag to me and I suspect it's got something to do with the unconventional design of the frame and what it does to the aerodynamics of the racket. Some shots were really nice and crisp, others were very loose and sometimes I would miss hit the shadow completely. Smashes for me were a huge letdown. I'm usually not a hard hitter anyway, but I do feel that with my Nanore 900, which has a lighter balance, I'm able to generate more power than with the Dura 10. Even with the Arc Saber 10, which many feel is almost identical to the Dura 10, I'm still able to hit harder. I'm not really sure why that is, but it might be because of the unconventional head design and the aerodynamics, which just messes with my timing. Full power and stick smashes feel weak and flat and never seem to put my opponent under pressure of any kind. This feeling was shared by my teammate who also got to try the racket. They also said that it was hard to generate power with it, though they're not able to tell why. With time, as you get more used to the racket, things might get a little bit better, but I don't think it will be a radical improvement. All in all, I felt that the Dura 10 was a disappointment in this area. Drives were another story though, and I think this is where the racket really shines. The arrow frame just easily cuts through the air, and in combination with the stiff shaft is doing wonders in flat pushes. It only requires a slight flick of the wrist and a push of the thumb to really drive the shadow over the net with speed. It doesn't really compete with the Nanoring 900, but you can definitely put your opponent under a lot of pressure in the flat games with the Dura 10. Likewise, defensive shots felt really great, blocks felt really easy and flick defenses are really easy due to the fast arrow frame. I've had no trouble defending smashes and sending back to the other court. In terms of feel, the Dura 9 In terms of feel, the Dura 10 is very solid, as can be expected from a high-end Yonex racket. The head is very stable, with very little twist, so even if you hit off-center, the shadow will fly straight. The feedback is typically low with minimal vibration which is what I personally like. When I flipped the racket, my forehand felt noticeably faster and it became much easier to swing the racket thanks to the aerodynamic green side. However, my drive suffered and my reaction on the defense became slower. I think the orange side is the problem in that it swings kinda slow and you really have to inject power from your arm to really generate pace on the shadow. When I played during the sessions with the Dura 10, I actually held the racket with the green side on my forehand and I would have lots of fun with it but it would mean that I'm not using the racket to its full potential or the way Yonex wants me to use it, which kind of make the hybrid design useless. So in conclusion, I really have mixed feelings with the Dura 10. While I really like the fast arrow frame, I find myself let down by the weak box frame. The concept of the hybrid design looks good on paper, but I feel that it fails to deliver in the execution. The main gripe I have with this racket is the box frame, which is shockingly slow while providing very little power. I would say this racket is a decent all-rounder that you can use in all disciplines. Having said that, during my time testing it I have not had any wow moment where I was really impressed. Yes, it's got some power to it, yes, it swings quite fast on the backhand side, but it doesn't really blow your mind in any particular area. That, considering all the hype and tech talk and aggressive marketing, has to be seen as a disappointment. If you look past all the gimmick, you're left with an expensive racket that is decent but does not really excel in anything. If you wanted a good all-round racket, you'd be better off with the Arc Saber 11 or 10, if you can still find one. If you wanted more power without compromising speed, 
the Jess B10 from Victor would be a better alternative. If you want pure power, you get the Vortrix Z-Force 2. That said, the Dura 10 did introduce the Arrow frame, which gets me really excited. The frame is really fast and I'm curious to see what they do with it in the future. So that was my review of the Yonex Dura 10. Overall, I did not really like this racket and have decided not to keep it, as I already have the Arxiva 10 and Arxiva 11, which I consider to be superior. But me not liking it does not mean that it will not be the racket for you. If you feel differently playing with this racket, feel free to share your experience and impressions down below in the comments. That is it for this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more reviews like this one on this channel. See you.